Dr. Dement, a lot of people all over the world have trouble sleeping. They have to take either sleep aids or they can't get to sleep or they can't stay asleep. Do you have any recommendations well, for that? The number one recommendation is be know thyself. In other words, there, there are times when you are not sleepy. There's a, there's a circadian, a daily rhythm in which the, uh, there's, a, there's a system of neurons at the base of the brain called a biological clock that actually stimulates the brain. So that if, if, that, if that period of stimulation uh, occurs when you're thinking of going to bed, well, you won't be able to sleep. So you need to know yourself, know when you're wide awake, when you feel the most stimulated, and then when that, when that turns off, you will begin to feel tired and sleepy. And that, so I think the most important thing of all is knowing your own propensity. Circadian rhythm. Right, it's cir called circadian, circadian rhythm, daily rhythm. Uh, it's very what if profound. you have to go to sleep? So, for example, well, if you, you have to go to sleep, in spite of the fact that your biological clock is keeping you awake, it's hopeless. You, in fact, you would have to take a very high dose of a sleeping pill now. And what's your opinion on sleeping uh, pills? Today's medications are safe and effective. Uh, there was a time many years ago when when sleeping pills were dangerous. They were addicting, uh, but the continued development has has made uh, today's medications s safe and effective. So if you really can't sleep, uh, I I have no problem at all recommending a sleeping medication. What about if it's every night? Well, even if it's every night. So it doesn't really have no. any. No, when you withdraw, you don't get any signs of addiction. You just go back to where you were prior to starting. But everyone misses that sleep that they're having. They just no, go. I away. think I think you know, and if someone is in a, I mean, it might well be a athletic environment which is very stressful. You know, you're, you've got to win and things have got to go just right, and it's very stressful. Uh, it would, I would not be uh, against taking a sleeping pill every night if if it worked. You know, you take the pill, you got to go to sleep. Any natural remedies for sleep? Oh, well, a warm in your bath. I mean, there are all kinds of whatever. So, what have you noticed have helped people sleep? Warm bath. Really? Just oh, yeah. Very effective. But, it's, but don't it's, fall asleep it's in the bath. It's inconvenient. <laughs> right. It's I mean, to take a bath just before you go to bed, you know, is a kind of a big deal. A shower doesn't really help much. So, a warm bath, anything else? Uh, Sometimes a little snack or warm milk. You know, each person will develop something or maybe a, a very boring. I, I used to go to sleep uh, with music playing just at the threshold of hearing. You know, where I, where I would, I, it was on, it would sort of distract me uh, or some boring radio program and and it would be low enough so that if I went to sleep, it didn't wake me up. And I use that as a way of falling asleep. What about ba sex back... before sleep? I I'm mean, sorry? I know that might be an inappropriate question, but sex before sleep. The man sometimes can fall asleep like that. But is there a difference between men and women after uh, sex not sleeping? Not really, uh, if you take huge numbers. But what, what you find is that the person who doesn't fall asleep right away finds it rather irritating <laughs> that the bed partner falls asleep immediately and it, if it's a man <laughs> makes that makes that awful noise. But it usually <laughs> is isn't it in two well, seconds men are more likely to snore than women right women why snore is that? though but why is that that's their anatomy i think and that comes into the whole is that sleep apnea no well it, it's the first sign yeah it's snoring is not good why is uh, it not good because it's the beginning of impaired airway function. In other words, if I'm snoring, <laughs> I'm having trouble getting air into my lungs. And I can go, then it, it can shut down completely. <laughs> now I'm not breathing at all. And that is the most prevalent, most serious sleep disorder on the planet. So have you studied obstruct that? Oh, Till the cows come home. Really, and what is your opinion of that? How do you cure that? Oh, you can. There are but surgical treatments. Like there is also what's called continuous positive airway pressure, 
delivered through the nose. Uh, now they're tongue devices, but but in general, you have to maintain the, uh, an openness of the airway. And I think. Do you think that has anything to do with the alignment or ba like balance in your neck? Well, it has to do with the forward? size of the tongue and the size of the jaw. Wow. And, and uh, we now recommend that wisdom teeth do not be pulled. Really? You know, if you pull, uh, if you get rid of wisdom teeth early in life, the size of the jaw will be smaller than it would be otherwise. And sometimes that constitutes a problem, but in general, uh, the, the size of the jaw is less genetically determined than almost everything else in the body. And, and to have healthy breathing during sleep, the size of the airway is very, very important. So keeping your wisdom teeth in makes your jaw... At least till you're grown up, yeah. So not get them out before what age? Well, I don't know. Would be four or six. Oh, well, okay. I was going to say, I was thinking you meant like at 20 or something. Oh, no. By, by oh, the okay. time you're 20, you're... You can, you're grown. You're fully grown as a rule.